This happened when I was 12, and I was home alone for one night, as my parents were out of town with friends. It was around 4.30 a.m. when I was abruptly woken up by knocking sounds at the front door, initially hesitant to answer. I cautiously peered through the peephole, only to find no one there. Oddly, about 10 minutes later, the knocking resumed. Concerned, I decided to put on my shoes and sweatshirt, just in case I needed to escape through the back door. Upon looking through the peephole again, I spotted a man in his early 50s, about a yard away. Unfortunately, I couldn't get a clear view of his face, but I noticed a knife tucked into his jeans. The situation escalated as he approached my house. Fearing for my safety, I quietly exited through the back door, sans pants, a detail that may sound peculiar, but my priority was swift action. Fortunately, I still had my tidy whities on. As I reached the sidewalk, I ran for what felt like miles, covering about two blocks before transitioning to a brisk walk for the next five blocks. Eventually, I stumbled upon a police car. The officer inside rolled down the passenger window, questioning my lack of pants. I hastily explained the perilous situation. A man with a knife at my front door, and my urgency to seek help. Assuring me, the officer invited me into the car, intending to drive me home and assess the situation. Upon arriving at my house, the officer instructed me to remain in the car while he confronted the intruder for my safety. After about three minutes, he emerged with the man in handcuffs. Curious, I approached to discover the shocking truth. The would-be intruder was my mom's ex-boyfriend. Apparently, he harbored malicious intentions, seeking revenge on my mom for breaking up with him. His plan involved harming her, and upon realizing she wasn't home, he turned his violent intentions towards me. The officer, after detaining the ex-boyfriend, explained that he would contact my parents. Providing my mom's number, he made the call, informing them about the unsettling incident. My parents assured the officer they were on their way, and the narrative unfolds. Minutes later, my parents arrived, and the officer briefed them on the unsettling events. Afterward, I recounted the entire story to my relieved but bewildered parents. They were grateful I emerged unharmed, but puzzled about my choice to leave the house in my underwear. My explanation of being terrified and wanting to act swiftly seemed to satisfy them. Expressing our gratitude to the officer, he left, taking the man with the knife into custody. Once inside, I sat down with my parents in the living room providing a second detailed account of the incident. Their primary relief was that I was safe and unharmed. Fast forward to today. At 23, I now have my own place. Ensuring the security of my home has become a top priority. We haven't heard from my mom's ex-boyfriend since, and we hope it stays that way. I never enjoyed being home alone, especially at night. The old house's creaks and groans seem to morph into eerie whispers echoing through empty rooms. On a specific evening, my parents were out for a dinner party, leaving me with the usual instructions to lock up and stay safe. Attempting to distract myself with a movie, the soft glow of the TV cast flickering shadows, doing little to ease my growing unease. As the night progressed, every small noise made me jump, and the wind outside rattled the windows like distant whispers, seeking refuge in my bedroom. I hoped the comfort of my own space would dispel the dread settling in my stomach. However, an unsettling feeling lingered. A chill swept through the room, and I noticed a draft from the hallway attributing it to the old house's quirks. Closing my eyes, I heard soft, almost imperceptible footsteps 
My eyes shot open, panic setting in as I realized they weren't mine. Frozen in bed, I followed the haunting cadence, bare feet meeting the cold floor. The hallway stretched out before me, dimly lit by the moon's glow. The footsteps grew louder as I followed against my better judgment. Down the corridor, the air grew charged, and a foreboding sense enveloped me. The footsteps abruptly ceased as I approached the end of the hallway. In the silence, a figure emerged in the feeble moonlight. Heart racing, I stumbled backward, retreating to my room. Locking the door, I called 911. And soon, the police arrived, pulling my parents into the unfolding drama. The police emerged from my house with the story's next chapter. They didn't notice anyone. The skinny and creepy guy from the previous incident had been a distant memory. And this new experience left me questioning my own perception. However, the fear that gripped me during the relentless knocking on the left side door was undeniably real. My parents, oblivious to the strange occurrence, reassured me that they hadn't seen anyone while driving back. As we sat in the car, my mom explained her sudden change of heart. She had become increasingly worried about leaving me alone after recalling the previous incident with the ex-boyfriend. The thought of something happening to her while I was home alone weighed heavily on her, prompting my dad to return and check on me. As we headed back home, I couldn't shake the feeling of uncertainty. Did the knocking truly happen? Or was it a manifestation of my deep-seated fear? The incident left me unsettled, and I continued to grapple with the ambiguity of that night. In the days that followed, the left side of our home, which had always been a running joke about its abandonment, now carried an air of mystery and unease. The incident left an indelible mark on my psyche, making it difficult for me to trust my own perceptions, especially when it came to staying home alone. Years have passed since that unsettling night, but the memory lingers. Now, at 23, living in my own place, I find solace in the routine of checking and double-checking locks before leaving or going to bed. The fear of the unknown still echoes faintly. A reminder that sometimes, even the familiar can become the source of haunting uncertainty. Only thing I could think of, I reached for my phone on the nightstand and hit the emergency call button. The shrill sound of the dial tone filled the room, catching the attention of the intruder. His menacing expression shifted, realizing I was summoning help. Panicking, I continued to yell for help while keeping the phone line open. The man, now aware that his presence was known, retreated hastily. I could hear his hurried footsteps as he exited my room and then the house through the front door. Trembling with fear, I stayed on the line with emergency services until I heard the comforting sirens approaching. My parents and grandmother arrived soon after and the police conducted a thorough search of the area. Unfortunately, the intruder had vanished without a trace. The incident left an indelible mark on my psyche. The violation of my personal space and the terror I experienced in my own home haunted me for years. Despite the passage of seven years, the question lingers. Was it a random intruder or someone with more sinister intentions? My parents, understandably shaken, installed security measures and I underwent counseling to cope with the trauma. The experience shaped my perspective on safety, causing a heightened sense of awareness in everyday situations. The story remains an unsettling chapter in my life, a reminder that danger can intrude unexpectedly, even in the supposed safety of one's home. And so, the mystery of that night 
endures. Grabbed the lamp with all the strength I could muster. Swinging it wildly, I struck the intruder with a force I never knew I possessed. The impact sent him staggering backward, momentarily dazed. Seizing the opportunity, I scrambled to my feet, ignoring the pain coursing through my battered body. Fueled by adrenaline and fear, I made a dash for the door. The intruder, now recovering, lunged towards me, but I managed to slip through the doorway. My legs propelled me down the hallway, and I could hear him in pursuit. Desperation fueled my escape as I raced through the house, narrowly avoiding his grasp. With every ounce of strength, I flung open the front door and burst into the open air. The cool breeze felt like a lifeline. I sprinted across the yard, screaming for help at the top of my lungs. Thankfully, a neighbor heard my cries and rushed to my aid, dialing 911 while ensuring my safety. The police arrived swiftly and the intruder was apprehended. The ordeal left me physically and emotionally scarred, but the swift response from law enforcement and the support of my family and friends aided in my recovery. The traumatic experience shaped the course of my life, instilling a heightened sense of vigilance and resilience. As the years passed, I underwent therapy to cope with the trauma and the incident became a pivotal point in my journey toward healing. Now, as I share this harrowing tale, I hope it serves as a testament to the strength within us, even in the darkest moments. The intruder may have left his mark, but he did not break my spirit. The story remains an open wound, a reminder of the fragility of life and the resilience that can emerge from the depths of despair. Police diligently investigated the horrifying incident in my home. The community's concern and support continued to pour in, providing a comforting backdrop to the tumultuous recovery process. My fractured leg was mending, but the emotional scars lingered. During this period, the police identified and apprehended the intruder he was brought to justice, facing the consequences of his heinous actions. Knowing that he was behind bars offered a semblance of closure, but the emotional aftermath persisted. I began attending therapy sessions to navigate the trauma, seeking to rebuild my sense of safety and security. The support of my family, friends, and community played a crucial role in my recovery. Together, we worked towards reclaiming our lives from the shadows of that fateful night. The incident had a profound impact on my family dynamics. My parents, once hesitant about leaving me alone at home, became even more vigilant about safety measures. Our home underwent extensive security upgrades, transforming it into a fortress of protection. As time passed, the echoes of that night gradually faded. I emerged stronger, carrying the resilience that had propelled me to escape the clutches of a monster. The ordeal taught me the importance of community, the strength within family bonds, and the resilience of the human spirit. Today, at 23, the scars remain, both visible and hidden, yet. I have learned to carry them with a sense of strength and empowerment. The narrative continues, not just as a tale of survival, but as a testament to the indomitable will to overcome darkness. Through the collective strength of community, the unwavering support of my loved ones, and my own resilience, I've embraced the power to shape my own story. The journey from victim to survivor has been transformative, and the scars serve as a reminder of the strength found within vulnerability. As the years unfold, the narrative evolves, carrying the lessons learned from that harrowing night, 
the story is not just mine. It's a shared testament to the human spirit's capacity to endure, heal, and emerge stronger from the darkest depths. Empowered and more in control of my own safety, the community, once shaken by the incident, rallied together to strengthen neighborhood watch programs and foster a greater sense of security. As I continued with therapy, the emotional healing progressed. I learned to navigate the lingering fear and anxiety, transforming those emotions into a driving force for resilience. The support of my family, friends, and the community played an instrumental role in my recovery, reminding me that I was not alone. Over time, my shattered confidence began to rebuild, and a new sense of normalcy emerged. I became an advocate for safety and awareness, sharing my story with others to emphasize the importance of vigilance and self-defense. The scars, both physical and emotional, became symbols of triumph rather than reminders of victimhood. Now, at 23, I am a survivor. The narrative has shifted from a tale of horror to one of empowerment. The self-defense classes and martial arts training have not only equipped me with valuable skills, but have also instilled a newfound sense of strength and confidence. The incident while undeniably traumatic, no longer defines me. Instead, it serves as a chapter in my life that propelled me to embrace resilience, community, and the strength found within. The scars are not marks of weakness, but symbols of survival, reminding me of the journey from darkness to light. As I navigate the complexities of life, the narrative continues to evolve. I am no longer haunted by the fear of the intruder's return. Instead, I am fueled by the determination to live life on my terms. The story persists, not as a haunting memory, but as a testament to the unwavering human spirit that can emerge from the darkest of trials. I'm truly sorry to hear about the harrowing experience you went through, and I commend your strength and resilience in overcoming such a traumatic event. Your story is a testament to the power of the human spirit and the importance of finding empowerment in the face of adversity. If you ever need support or someone to talk to, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you for sharing your story. And I wish you continued strength and healing as you move forward in life.